Good morning, hey. everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Hope we timed that just perfectly. I think we were had good timing. Yes. All right, we're back again, Karen. We're gonna. There's a lot of. Do we have any questions coming in? That you know what? There's questions coming in for half an hour before we even. And we have quite a few on the line, but lots of phone calls. Why don't you give the disclaimer this time? Anything we say can and shall be used against us? No, 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 no. No, no. This is uh, information for your own personal research purpose. We don't cure anything. He doesn't cure anything. We ask that you take the information and do some homework and discuss with your medical doctor any medical related issues. That's good. Is that good? That's good enough. And then also, okay. if you are cured, don't mention our name. Yeah, if you happen to be cured of anything, we had nothing to do with it. Exactly. Those of us in the control room feel a heck of a lot better. I don't know if I call it a cure, but I'll tell you what, the system works. You don't feel better because of us. Just remember no. that. And, and we're being um, a little sarcastic. Also, um, one more point mm -hmm. that um, I'll come back to. Oh, yes, oh. I have a couple interesting quizzes. And I'm just going to do the first quiz right off the bat, okay, just good. because um, we have I'm so many to get people. Facebook here. So here, here's the question: Why do women live longer than men? Okay. Because they're smarter. So that makes them live longer. <laughs> that yes. So if you know the answer, go ahead and give it to us. But I have. Um, we'll come back to that. Um, we're going to jump right to the calls. We have Maria. Are you there? You're from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Are you there? Yes, I am. Yes. Oh, great. What's your question? Okay, last year in September, the last week of September, I had a right brain stroke, they called it. And I was on keto. Mm -hmm. But after that, things went down here. I went off of keto. I got a little depressed. They put me a lot of different statins. The last statin they put me on was um, adborstatin. Mm -hmm. That made me sick, and they gave me a lot of bad lower abdomen problems. And it caused a lot of bad um, um, joint problems. So I'm wondering, should I go back on keto? Well, Or um, should I just... Here's, here's my thought. I think the combination of keto and a especially intermittent fasting is going to be very, very important for you because intermittent fasting is all about um, repair and strengthening the vascular system. The opposite of keto is basically a high-carb diet, which, which can increase your risk for getting strokes. So uh, keto, I think, would be very beneficial. Do it healthily, especially healthily, because um, you don't want to do it with poor quality nutrients. The other thing I think will be very good for you is to... Um, Search out uh, a local doctor that is maybe an anti-aging doctor that specializes in peptide therapy because the peptide therapy is a new thing. It's um, a lot cheaper than stem cell. I think it works in some cases better, but there's certain types of um, peptide therapy. Uh, it it's doesn't have very many side effects that can actually repair um, things that you're going through right now. I think uh, that will help you. So um, those are some things that you can do. Um, you want to start studying the, the healthy version of keto for sure. I don't know what you did before, but add the intermittent fasting. But thank you so much. And um, uh, Green Bay is just a beautiful place in the fall. I've been up there. So thanks for calling. Angela, you're from North Carolina. You had a question. Go ahead. Yes, I basically had kind of the same question she had. What did you say uh, do instead of a stem cell? Yes. That was cheaper. Well, stem cell is really good. I as had well. mine on. The yeah. Go ahead. Stem, stem cell is Sorry. like the latest thing. It's really awesome. It's amazing. Um, and it works for um, many things. They're doing a lot of experiments now. Um, however, peptide therapy is also a, another new anti aging technology that is just coming out that is very, very broad. You can use uh, peptides for all sorts of things, for ulcers, for joint stuff, for uh, they have a lot of things coming up for repairing brain tissue, uh, for recovering from stroke. There's, it's just a really big field. And these proteins kind of go into the body and they start to um, act, be activated and they do all sorts of repair actions. Um, so you should probably research both of them. but. Um, Stem cell is also really amazing as well, so you can look into that. But stem cell is kind of a 
um, it's a natural thing that um, you get injected and basically you have this undifferentiated cell that can turn into uh, whatever you need help with in your body. So it can actually help build up different things with the joint and the nervous system. Uh, and there's, I'm going to do a whole complete video on this, but I think you should um, look at both and just see what would work out better for you. Thanks, Angela. Hey, Kevin, you're from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. How are you? I am. Uh, good morning, Dr. Burke. Good morning. How are you? Hi. Good morning. Good, good. So um, I will be 37 years old next month. I am five foot eight, 227 pounds. My all-time high was 287 pounds a few years ago, and then the past two years I floated in the 260s. This year I decided to get very serious and got down to 244. Um, however, I'm currently on day nine of a fast. This is my longest fast I've ever been on, mm -hmm. and as of today, I'm 227 pounds. Wow. Um, I drink electrolyte water, one cup of coffee a day, um, sparkling water throughout the day with lemon and apple cider vinegar. Um, though my taste buds are ultra sensitive now, so the electrolyte water is tasting more and more like seawater. Um, but many, many people are supportive of this, but there's a lot of naysayers um, on social media. These are people I don't know. They're all strangers. I don't tell family and friends that I fast. Yeah. Um, and they, they are telling me that I'm destroying my organs. A lot of them are saying, you know, can't wait to see how this is going to turn out. And it could be because I made a quote from a very enthusiastic faster who is also on YouTube. I won't mention his name on here. Um, and something he had mentioned that I reiterated, and please clarify this for me, but he had said, as long as I have fat reserves, I could fast indefinitely until my fat is gone, that I physically cannot starve until my fat deposits are depleted. So I... I don't plan on fasting until my ideal weight, which I think would be around 170 pounds. Um, but it's day nine. I feel absolutely fantastic, and I only planned on fasting until 10 days, which would be tomorrow. Okay. So my question is, if I still feel great, can I keep going past 10 days, or should I break the fast sooner than later? And obviously, I would use your refeeding methods with an egg or half an avocado or anything. Yeah. Good point, uh, Kevin. Um, let me just give you my viewpoint on that. I think our, our bodies do need some fat on them, but you can, you, people can fast a lot longer than they think. Uh, I mean, we've been doing it for, for centuries, and you know, I mean, this goes way back. I mean, people fast for a very long time, and there's all sorts of health benefits that occur, especially if you're feeling great. Um, when all the fat is then used up, and you don't, and especially if you don't have nutritional reserves, your body will start going after the muscle protein as well. But, I mean, 10 days, I don't think you even hit the tip of the iceberg. You can do it. But the point is that make sure you take enough sea salt um, during the fast. That's really important. And also electrolytes and, and even the B vitamins because we don't know um, what, your, what your reserves are. And those are some, th some things that I would recommend, especially like the trace minerals, things like that. Because you don't, when you're fasting, you're drawing off your reserves. So, the, the key is uh, replenishing whatever you're missing. And if you, if you start noticing hair loss, for example, well, then you probably need something else. But if you're feeling great and you ride the wave and uh, just play it by ear, there's two types of people, people that will bring you up and people that bring you down. Mm -hmm. Obviously, those naysayers are, um, they're kind of, um, they're usually critics. And I would just ignore those guys or delete them from social media um, because, um, you know, they don't want you to fail. So... Good luck to you, Kevin. Thanks for calling. And I think we need to go to the answer to the question. Well, Why do <clears throat> women live longer than men? This is all over the map. Uh, some people think it's because of single and getting married, which I don't understand because there would be the same number. Right. Or, right. But in general, um, <clears throat> women are more in tune to their bodies. Women will go get help faster than men. Uh, um, hormones. One person said it's because of hormones. Um, here's one. Because they cry more. Not exactly sure, but, <laughs> but it's an answer. Hey, okay. you know. Um, so, 
Uh, the, you know, we didn't get like the huge volume of answers like we usually do, or more questions coming in about other things. Um, but go ahead. Let's so let's you, talk yeah, about and that. And you you mentioned it could be like the IQ thing, right? That could pretty because we're be smarter. That. Yeah. Well, because we're smarter, and then that would uh, address everything. Because you eat, you'll make better choices with eating. We'll make better choices. We'll have less stress. Got it. Okay. Um, we know uh, more things. We've, I'm just exactly. ruling from the <laughs> mouth. Now, go ahead, start okay. talking. So here's, here's the thing. Um, estrogen, that's why. Estrogen that is, is like the bittersweet answer. Exactly. Estrogen is a source of most of my problems. I totally understand. But here's how it works. Estrogen is a very, very, very powerful antioxidant. Mm. And um, you've got uh, this incredible war going on at the molecular level in your cells. You, your body makes oxidants and things that corrode the body and um, destroy the body, even hydrogen peroxide, for example. And then environmentally, you're getting all these these things from the environment that are breaking things down, and then we have antioxidants that build things back up. So you have this network of antioxidants. So you got this battle. Well, women that have more estrogen, they basically can um, have the advantage to have a more antioxidants, and they don't get the breakdown. They don't get the oxidation, especially in the energy factories called the mitochondria. So they have less heart disease. They have less cancer. Um, now, estrogen also, if being if you're exposed in the environment by too much estrogen, that can cause cancer, so that can decrease your life. But we're talking about the, the estrogen that you make in your body. So that is the plus point. Even though you have to go through years of child carrying the child and pregnancy and the menstrual, straight, uh, menstrual cycle, you do menopause, get the Menopause. Menopause. Fat. That's the right. The cushion. Right, but you get to live longer. So the average age um, of in, U in the U.S., anyway, is what? Take a while to guess how long women live. I would say the average lifespan of a woman is uh, 87. 87? You know, that's a really good question. And uh, That was actually an answer. Very good answer. Thank you. Uh, 81. 81.2. 81. .2. 81. I'm going to push it. Yeah, men live to 76.4. It seems uh, very, very young. I mean, that just. Yeah, I, I think it would be interesting to know is that like average. a really current average or is that from it's maybe. It's 2018. You want 2019? Yeah. We're not done yet. We have to <laughs> fulfill the year before that happens. But I want to know as of this week. Well, you know, um, the other uh, interesting yeah. thing, I'm just going to throw this out there, that throw people. That People who are much older, I would say, you know, in their 70s, 80s, are they doing all these things that people are doing now, like healthy keto, and are they yeah. understanding that eggs are not the devil, and that low fat is maybe something to avoid, and so maybe they're, they're going to hang in that, that range of, you know, I have, Leading. I don't know what I did with it, but I have a test that measures your, bio, your biological age. And that was a really cool test. People would come in and they would say, wow, I'm a lot older, oh, I'm a lot younger. I remember that. I should pull that thing that out. Body I, composition. I wanna, yeah. Well, no, it's, a, it's another test. That it was part of it, wasn't it? No. Oh. It's actually a, um, it's called heart rate variability. Mm -hmm. I want to pull that thing out of the closet and test um, because it was very fascinating. I had one guy who actually... He, he rated the best score of anyone. He was 80 years old. Mm -hmm. And I said, what the heck? This guy's like incredible. He's walking down the street, steps in a pothole, falls on his face, gets knocked out for three hours, wakes up, cut all over, and then he just heals within a couple of days. So it just so happens that um, he took first in the Olympics in water polo back when he was ah. younger. So this guy maintained, he can hold his breath now at 80 years old, three minutes Water. So, wow. so he's good recovery. Incredible recovery. So what was his what was his age? You didn't say. It was something like forty. Oh wow. Yeah, incredible. On that note, we need to go to Steve mm -hmm. uh, from Springfield, Missouri. Are you there, Steve? Yes, sir. Hi. What was your question? Uh, I I seem to be having trouble with uh, I. 
uh, have high high glucose in the morning. I can eat uh, at night and have my numbers down to say like here the other day it was 110 at, before I went to bed. But then in the morning it's back up to uh, anywhere from 130 to 140 or something like it in the morning and I, I just don't seem to so I can um, eat breakfast and it'll bring it back down, but it does. It's always uh, in the morning. I mean, before I eat, I have a fasting. The fasting numbers, I guess, is what you call. Okay, it. that's what I missed. Your fasting glucose is high in the morning, right? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, that is called the dawn phenomenon. And what's happening is your liver um, is making sugar. Um, and you're still probably in that insulin resistance phase where you're still adapting. It's going to get better with time. Um, so what you could do to burn off that sugar, um, if you're concerned, is basically exercise. And that will just eat up some of that sugar. The other thing you can do is add, add apple cider vinegar. Chromium will help your blood sugars. Uh, and then make sure that the version of keto and intermittent fasting that you're doing is um, healthy version, and like I talk about. And I think that would um, handle that. But it's, it's a normal thing. Uh, it could be a little spike in cortisol, but it's probably just the liver is making too much because your insulin uh, is, is going down, but you still have insulin resistance. So the body senses that, like, oh, low, low sugar, so we have to make more. That's all. Um, it's not a major problem. Thanks for your call, Steve. All right. Karen. Yeah. Give me your question, an easy one. You want an easy one? Okay, so uh, here's an easy one. Abdu from YouTube wants to know, can, how would you fix anterior pelvic tilt? Okay, pelvic tilt. Um, well, the pelvis rocks back and forth. There's several uh, muscles that stabilize it. Mm -hmm. And it's usually an imbalance with um, the psoas. Uh, the psoas is a really, it's, an, it's the muscle that actually it flexes your, your body forward. It kind of connects the upper, upper part of your body with your legs. And um, so it's usually a very tight psoas. So there's a, I actually did a video on this. You can mm. watch it. You just need to lay on your stomach and arch up and start working that, uh, working that out. Because, but also stretch your hamstrings as well because there's, some, there's an imbalance with uh, a muscle in your pelvis. A lot of times when you do too much of like biking, for example, and you're just in this flex mode, that can do it. Uh, you want to reverse the flow and start working the opposite muscle. But I would watch my video on the psoas. Okay, good. Okay. Next one. Um, why shouldn't we eat, this is an assumption that we shouldn't, but why shouldn't we eat collagen or BA branch chain amino acids on the keto diet? It's from a YouTube watcher. <coughs> well, Collagen and branched amino acids, um, they're not, first of all, they're not complete. They're, they don't have all the complete amino acids, okay, the, the essential ones that mm -hmm. build proteins. And if you're consuming something that is incomplete, you can't build anything without them being complete. Now, there are some advantages to taking them, maybe for energy, um, but I wouldn't take them when they're fasting because a lot of that is not being absorbed as repair. They're being used either as um, like turning out into sugar as fuel, or um, they're being wasted. Hmm. So, um, for example, um, you don't really utilize very much of branched amino acids, maybe less than 1%. Uh, even if you take like, um, and this brings up another point of a product that I can just kind of mesh to help, help understand this a little bit better. This is a new product that I, one of the products that I'm just releasing is called Keto Essential Aminos. This is purely just amino acids, that's it. It doesn't really come from like meat or chicken because I wanted something that um, doesn't have any waste. 100% of it, well 99% of it is used to replace body tissue. So it's not used for calories. So you don't get any waste. So the body doesn't work, work harder. So, so when you take like meat or chicken or even dairy, uh, uh, at least half of that is being used for, um, for, for repair, but the other half is just being wasted. So with this, when you do collagen, first of all, you're getting an incomplete ratio of amino acids. Secondly, uh, a lot of it's being used for waste. And, and because of it's used as fuel, it's going to spike your insulin. 
this stuff doesn't because mm -hmm. it's 100% is, well, 99 is, 99 of it is used for repair action. So this is mainly used for like if you're an athlete or you want better recovery and you want to, let's say for example your recovery is real slow, you would take that on an empty stomach. Don't take it with meals. Now how would you know if, if your recovery is slow? If you work out and it's taking way too long to recover, you should, in a couple days, you should recover. Or let's say, for example, you're not making gains with your workouts. They're slow and you want to speed them up. Or let's say, for example, you get sick very often or you have a low stress tolerance. Mm -hmm. These are all just indicators that you need better protein. And people think, well, is that just na nails, hair, and skin? No, it's actually all the protein. Your body is made of like all the enzymes, all the chemical reactions. Um, there's so many different proteins I'm going to talk about this in the summit, but there's so many different proteins that your body is made out of. Uh, you have reparative proteins, you have anti-aging proteins, your entire immune system is all protein. Now can't you just eat meat or eggs? The, the, you can, but the thing is like the best complete protein would be the egg. Actually a little better would be breast milk, but that's unavailable for most people. So you can do eggs, mm -hmm. okay, and then it goes down from there. Um, so there's a lot of benefit to that, but the other thing is like, um, a good portion of that is being wasted as urea and ammonia and things like that. And then also our stomach acid. Um, people don't have the stomach acid so they can't absorb it. If you have intestinal damage, you're not going to be able to absorb the amino acids that well. So there's a lot of issues with the absorption of protein and um, just from the, your own body. So mm -hmm. this kind of goes in like a rocket ship. It bypasses everything. Uh, people that have gastric bypass, for example, this would be great for them. Um, but if you want a little more of the unfair advantage of just getting straight amino acids in the right ratios, um, and that's really important, there's been a lot of research on this, um, it's a great product for that. So that's why, Karen. Does okay. that make, make sense? That makes sense. Are you tracking with me? I am. Do I get another question? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so Brianna on Facebook, she gets heart palpitations. She's on keto. Yeah. She gets heart palpitations after she eats. She's trying to keep up with her potassium. What can she do? Well, it's going to be either um, a potassium deficiency, which you need to build that up over time, or maybe magnesium. Or it could also be related to the gallbladder, um, which sometimes when you're doing keto, you add more fat and things like that. And if you add more fat, it creates more of a strain on the gallbladder. And there's a huge connection between the gallbladder and the liver and also the heart. And it can cause a little bit of a disturbance with the heart. Um, it's not a serious problem, but it, it's been known to cause palpitations and slight irregular heartbeats because of maybe the congestion of the gallbladder and it's putting pressure on the heart to some degree. I've seen that a few times. So if she's already handling um, the potassium. I think that's going to take a long time though. Mm -hmm. If you have, um, if, you, if you're an average person that lived on average food and you have insulin resistance, you're not going to be able to absorb potassium and magnesium like you should anyway. So it's going to take quite a few months to build up your reserve for those minerals so your so your rhythm of the heart is good so you don't have the extra beats so you don't skip a beat on that note hey Tina you're from Georgia you had a question on keto and inflammation go ahead good morning to you and Karen good morning. Um, yes when I'm on keto it feels like I have more inflammation in my back than when I'm not doing keto. Uh -huh. Kind of like when you have a sore tooth and you put pressure on it and it feels good, but when you release it, then it starts pounding again. It's mm -hmm. kind of how my back does. It's like I'm losing weight and then it feels worse than when I'm heavier. What, question, what is going question, on with that? Question I have, as far as the location of where you feel this pain, is it higher up in the back or is it in the very lower part of the back? It actually fluctuates. It goes from actually from like my shoulders or it can be smack dead in the middle of my back mm -hmm. or my lower back. I fell off my school bus and when I went to the doctor, they said I have arthritis in my back so it's going to be all over the place. And really it is kind of all over the place, but um, it, it really didn't hurt until I fell off my bus. <laughs> but You fell off your what? That's where I'm at. I'm just kind of stuck. My school bus. I fell off the school bus. Were you on top of the school bus? Or were you stepping off and you fell? 
Um, actually, I was at the, the top stair, and the door wouldn't open, and I pushed it, and then it flew open, uh, and I flew out. Uh, <laughs> and where did you land? Body-wise. On the concrete. On your butt, or what part of your body? Oh, actually, on my, uh, in the front, on my front, and kind of in the side, on the side, front, type. Okay. Okay, so a couple things, Tina. You need to learn to tuck and roll uh, better, so you you fall, just tuck and roll. Secondly, um, I would watch my videos on um, old injuries, how to deal with old injuries. And um, there's a lot of great techniques for that. I think even the acupressure tool and also the pressure on the, in the, it, the front part of your lower abdomen will help your back greatly. But with what you're going through, if it's the higher in the lower back, that could be more of a kidney strain. And I did a video on this. Um, you can watch it. And it just means you're doing too much protein. Secondly, if it's higher up, it could be that you're doing too much fat, and that's because the gallbladder will cause pain in the right shoulder blade area, right through in here on the that upper feels, back. That feels just good. Just tell me when to stop, Karen. Just keep um, so the combination of the old injuries plus that could make it shift. But here's the other thing you can do. Do higher amounts of vitamin D. Um, you know, just do like 20,000 IUs, and that actually add some K in there, and that should also help your inflammation greatly. Um, and those are some things that you can do. But definitely watch my video on pain. Uh, as far as the techniques go, if you fell, um, we show you how to undo some of that damage. OK? Thanks for your call. All right, Karen. You got another? Yep. OK, good. So um, have you done a dandruff video? Yes. OK. So do you want to say something on that? There was a request for you do, to do a video. Dandruff is usually um, kind of a mild version of psoriasis. But what you want to do, that's, um, you know, let's say it's like a B vitamin deficiency. But it's really like B2, B3. But it's really kind of a deeper issue uh, with the colon. There's some imbalances with the colon. Could mm -hmm. be the liver. Um, so if, if you get on keto and you do it, you should, be, you should improve, if, especially if you're doing it correctly. You're, I think more vitamin D will help you greatly, but you may need to take a natural antibiotic too, like um, oregano oil or garlic. Um, that would be very good. And then, or, or just consume the foods that you have oregano or garlic, like a big pizza, right? Yeah. I'm being sarcastic. No. Make sure it's keto friendly. Good. All right. So I'm going to go over here. <laughs> Dar okay. Dara, are you there from Corpus Christi? Texas? Texas. Hi, Dr. Berg. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Great. It's so it's so good to talk to you again. Okay, um, here's my question is kind of a two part question, but it I promise it'll all tie together. Okay. Um, I was born with celiac disease um, in nineteen sixty eight, so I'm fifty one. Um, and I'm finding out through my own research that I have been pretty much malnourished my whole life. Um, my parents tried to keep me gluten-free for about the first eight years, and then I started gaining weight, and they put gluten back in my diet because back then they believed you'd outgrow it. Right. Um, so um, I didn't really stop eating gluten um, for a really long time, and I cheated a lot. I actually joined an NA program to try to keep me off gluten, a 12-step program, to keep me off of it because we're finding out that People are dying because there, there, was like an, there was a study or something that people had a 90% chance of getting cancer if they continued to eat gluten and they had no symptoms. And so I quit for the most part. I still do have cheat days, um, but not since I started keto last October. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm still anemic, but there's the, – the, and here's my question. Um, my iron values on my blood tests are actually good. Um, because I do eat liver and I, I do eat, I do eat healthy keto. I practice intermittent fasting and have for almost the last year. Um, but my MCV values are still bad. My blood, I guess my blood cells have overcompensated. There's less of them, but they're bigger. That's my understanding. Um, and the other reason is, um, several years ago, I was diagnosed with a thickened uterine lining. And my progesterone was on the floor. They, I mean, it was off the chart. They couldn't, they couldn't, pr they couldn't get any progesterone hey, Dara, to register Dara, on blood tests. Quick question. Yes. So, um, yes. 
I totally, I could see that there's, um, you, do, you have a lot of different parts of this history. If you can give me the one quick question, just because yes. I, uh, we have a lot more questions, that would be wonderful. Yes, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm taking uh, 800 milligrams of compounded progesterone, which I know you do not, you do not advocate. Um, I've had some success in getting that lining down. My question is, how do I um, get my uh, blood test to come back to normal for the anemia, and how do I get the rest of my lining to go down if I'm not taking progesterone? Got it. Okay, so um, I would, I'm assume you're doing, I'm assume you're doing healthy keto and intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is going to be very, 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 very powerful. And I really, really hope you're coming to the summit because we're going to be talking about um, chronic digestive problems and malabsorption and things like that. And that's probably what's happening. Um, there is something I am experimenting with that I would love to um, have you being involved with. So if you can email Maria at drberg at drberg.com and be one of my test case, I would love to do that. Um, because it involves the absorption and um, sounds really awesome, but I need uh, enough people to do this test on. So if you can just email them and we'll, we'll, um, we'll connect up and then I will do a, like a little, maybe a video later just on the results. But there are certain things that you could do naturally to actually repair the colon. Um, but I, I really, um, I can't give you like all the details at this point because it's like too involved. But as far as anemia, it's not just about taking iron uh, but there's, there's a B12 factor too. So the best thing you can do right now is maybe to take a little more B12 and a product um, by Standard Process called Zypan, which actually gives you something called the intrinsic factor so you can absorb the B12 a lot more. Um, so go ahead and look up Zypan and from, maybe you can find it on Amazon and I think that'll help you. All right, Karen. Are we ready for a quiz? Yes. Okay. We are ready. So. What's worse, white sugar or white flour? Mm. Okay, guys. See if you could give me you the right answer Facebook. on that one. Yep. Don't let me down. <laughs> okay, do you have a question? Yes. Um, can a ketogenic diet help vertigo? Yes, because the vertigo um, in some cases is a problem with the nerve to the inner ear. And what happens is that um, just like you would have something like peripheral neuropathy, which is a side effect from blood sugar issues, you could have the problem with the inner ear. It could be a problem with a lot of different nerves. So um, once you do keto and drop the carbs, you can help improve that. But in addition, if you want to really spike things nicely, get some benfotamine. Benfotamine not only helps kind of undo some of the damage, but it also can help some, some of the damage from other nerves, like the retina, and like the nerves in the bottom of your feet. So benfotamine and the keto lifestyle and intermittent fasting. Good. Okay. Good. Did you like that? Yeah. Now, Michael on Facebook is wondering, does it matter what temperature your water is when you drink it? Or if you drink it really cold, will that do something to your metabolism? Does it matter? Well, when you drink hot water, it kills the water. No, I'm just kidding. No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's not a big factor. It's like a, it's not one of those things that um, it's going to make or break or create a big impact. So whatever temperature you want to drink the water, totally fine. Go for it. Yeah. Okay, good. Just don't drink it boiling hot where it's scalding. It's, right. Good advice. And then <laughs> Aram on YouTube, we're going to have to get rid of all those buttons. Need, I think we need a button to I think mute we need Steve. To, right. We need to tape. We need to cuff him. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, I think his name is Aram from YouTube. I hope you're, I'm pronouncing that right. Wants to know why can you have an increase in body temperature when you start keto? Which I personally have experienced a change in body temperature. I don't know if it's like starting keto, but what would cause that, well, Dr. Burke? Well, I think the, because um, a lot of people feel, might feel a transitional cold, but I, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking it's, there is a, there's something that's happening to the body and you're actually burning fat more efficiently. Mm -hmm. You're burning more fat, so it could be uh, that being an effect. But other than that, I don't really have an answer um, for sure, but my yeah. guess would be more of a, and when you're burning fat, you know, you might heat up a little bit more, possibly. Okay. Well, 
That's my guess. We collectively appreciate your honesty on that one. Okay, good, Karen. Now, I have one more question. Yeah, I, I'm, because of Steve, I'm not going to ask this question. Okay. Because I know he has no self-control. Okay. Um, so do we want an answer to the question? We do want an answer to the question. Okay. People stopped answering. Mostly Facebook, it looks like we're getting answers. I don't see a lot of answers on YouTube, peeps. My peeps on YouTube. Well, do I need to so ask it again? There it is. Sugar, There's one. Sugar, flour. Okay. All right. All right. You did your sugar, job. Sugar, sugar, flour. Okay. Both. So they're saying both on YouTube. On Facebook, I'm seeing more sugar. Okay. Well, what do you think it is? What's worse? Well, I'm going to say flour. You are correct, Karen. <gasps> I'm going to tell like you why. Now, I'm not talking about the beet sugar or the high fructose corn syrup. I'm talking about cane sugar, white cane sugar. Okay. But isn't that better than beet sugar? No, because, well, yes, it is. Oh, okay. Okay. But so because beet sugar is GMO. But, um, okay. but when I'm talking about white sugar, I'm talking about white cane sugar, okay? Cane sugar. So, I mean, that's, it's, it's pretty bad. I mean, it has, uh, you pull out all the nutrients, and um, you're eating this refined carbohydrate. It's going to deplete minerals, it's going to affect your blood sugars, it's going to create oxidation and create, it's going to make you old, it's going to create all the problems that we're dealing with. It sounds horrible. It is. But if we take refined flour, there's some other issues that I want to talk about. Okay. And um, I'll do a whole video on this, but if we just take the glycemic index of uh, table sugar, mm -hmm. it's um, 63, okay? But white what flour... Is sugar? That is sugar. Oh, sugar is 63. Yeah, and then white flour is 71. So what flour has is higher on the glycemic index. Wow, what about wheat flour? Now, ask me why that is. Oh, why is that? Well, because <laughs> nearly half of the cane sugar is fructose, and it's, it's going to go right to the liver. So it's going to create a different issue with the glycemic index, So, which is going to create other problems. But anyway, the point is that it's higher because it's like, and turn into more glucose. That's not the big problem. The big problem is that um, when they when they make it white, they bleach it with. You're talking about the flour or the flour. sugar? Okay. They don't bleach. As far as I know, they don't bleach the uh, sugar. They just take out everything. But they might, you know, something I haven't even thought about. Mm. I didn't find any data on it. But they definitely bleach with several chemicals this white flour with chlorine. Uh, benzoyl peroxide. These are oxidating things that, wow. and the reason why they do that is it makes the, the flour real nice and white and powdery and it makes it, um, the gluten stand out and stick a little bit more. It makes the pastries more fluffy and mm. things like that. So, but they also use, this is the real bad thing, it's brom bromate, potassium bromate. And that, um, it's banned in the European Union. It's banned in China. It's banned in Canada, but not in America. Hmm. And what does it do? Well, it creates, you know, there's been studies that show it causes cancer in animals. But why do they use it in the flour? Because it's an oxidating, it's a very powerful oxidative agent that makes the flour really nice and the texture's nice. It makes it fluffy when you cook it. So, so, so what is it called again? Potassium bromate. Now, would that be in the list of ingredients, or is it just part of the processing that they don't have to list as an ingredient? I think, it, I, if I'm not mistaken, it is in the ingredients, but I, I couldn't swear by it, Karen. Can you swear by it? No, I cannot. Okay. Um, so we have that, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have, um, so we have these additional chemicals. We have also other, like, things like a dough um, conditioner. <laughs> they put that in there. What um, is that? Well, it's another chemical that makes the, it, it, uh, the texture just right. So can you find just ground flour? And if you could find... Well, th this is why they do it. First of all, people don't like, like to make their own... Remember when we used to grind our... Yeah, we don't do A that long, long time ago, people, to we save would get wheat berries to and save grind time, our pe own... People don't want it. They want to buy it from the store. Right. So what happens is they, the problem, it goes bad real quick. So they have to preserve it. So they have to take everything out of it. Okay. So you get this complete refined product. They put preservatives, oxidizers in there, and now you get something that sits in the shelf for a long time. But don't worry, Karen, they put the vitamins back in as enriched vitamins like iron, which we talked about that, it's pretty bad, and folic acid, which is 
is equally as bad because it's a synthetic version. So they put these synthetic vitamins back in. So you're consuming uh, a package of, of chemicals on top of a very highly refined product. So that makes it worse than sugar. Sounds terrible. Yes. On that note, let's go to a... <laughs> On that on note, that note, let's go to let's take a happy caller. Aline from St. Louis, Missouri. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, how are you? I'm really good. How are you? Great. After that wonderful thing I just talked about. Yes. So the reason I was calling is I did the quiz mm -hmm. that you offer and determined that I am an adrenal type. Mm -hmm which makes a lot of sense, you know, when I read all the, um, you know, the symptoms or whatnot. So I've been doing intermittent fasting, doing the healthy keto, and I can, and getting a lot more vitamins. And I can tell that I'm feeling better. But what I'm wondering is, you know, how, is there a way to know when, not that I'm in a rush, when are my adrenals healed? When is my insulin resistance in the process of healing or, or you know, um, yeah. are gone? Good question, because you got two things. You got insulin resistance, which is different. Um, insulin resistance could take, depending on how bad your diet has been in the past, usually, um, it could take months to even a couple years for insulin resistance to come back to a good level. But you know what? When you're on keto and you're doing intermittent fasting, you probably won't feel any the side effects from intermittent fast uh, from from in, insulin resistance. So that's good, but the the question is, I think people want to know, well, if I go back to my old ways, will I will those symptoms come back because I still have it? I go, well, yes, because you're creating it by the diet. So, um, the other point with the adrenals is that one good a uh, couple tests that you can do to determine if your adrenals are healthier. One is to um, you can check your blood pressure. Uh, lying down and then standing and then measure the difference between lying and standing. Uh, normally it should go up by six to ten points. With adrenal burnout it takes it goes down, it drops down or it goes way too high. Um, there's also a really good test it's called the um, it's called heart rate variability and that's a really good way to measure the autonomic nervous system which the adrenal is more sympathetic and you can kind of just see what your recovery is versus your Sympathetic, because if you're sympathetic dominant, it could be more, uh, more adrenal problems. Um, I think the best way is to also just measure your tolerance to stress, your ability to handle um, babysitting ten small children in a in a daycare center for over eight hours. If you can tolerate that, then your adrenals are healthy. Uh, if you can't, then you need to give it more time. So you just want to look at various That's things. That's the test. Yeah. That's the official the diagnosis. Test. Yeah. But there's all different ways. You do, but I actually created a video on this, so you could watch that. But um, it could take months to really, it really depends on how much stress you had. Some people will get, one, one way to know that your adrenals are very weak is your, um, like, one little thing, it just kind of, like, explode. And you get really, really upset or you'll get overwhelmed easily. That's an adrenal test. It could be blood sugars, but it could be the adrenal, too. And by doing healthy keto, you're actually going to help your adrenals greatly. But thanks, Ellen, for your question. Karen, I want to just do a little quick commercial. Okay. This is another product that we just came out with. Oh, new this flavor. This is an orange electrolyte powder, and it tastes like Tang, a healthy version of Tang. Um, you ever have Tang? Uh, probably when I was like eight. Yeah. So it's orange, and it's really, really good. It's good. Do you like it? I yeah, like it. Yeah, I like it. It's very the refreshing. The kids love it. Yeah. It's become the new household favorite. Check it out on Dr. Wrong Berg. Wrong camera view com. there, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. Okay. What do we got? Okay, good. So, I've never heard of this. Tonsil stones? Yeah. So, can you do a video on it and if and or does keto help? And what is it? You can get these little these little deposits that accumulate, um, and they're basically a concentrated like bacteria thing. That they're they're um, they're not as hard as like calcium, but they're they're pretty hard, and they deposit in the tonsils, and it's actually quite common. I tell you hmm. what, why don't I just do a whole video on that? Well, someone asked you to do a video on it. Okay, so okay, thank so you for there that you idea. Go. Hey, 
If you've watched a lot of videos and you know something you haven't found a video on, like if you have an idea and you search the videos and it's really not, there's not a video on it, please send your idea and so we can do a video on it. tonsil stones are really, really gross. So okay. do you know what videos I'm going to do today? The topics? Nope. Okay. Um, if rice is so bad, why are the Chinese thin? Okay. Well, the Chinese aren't all thin. Well, you just have to wait for the video to watch what I'm going to talk about. And I'm also going to do a video on the seven things that your eyes reveal about your blood sugars. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? So stay tuned for, for these videos. Okay. Okay. Now, here's a question. Venus insufficiency. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can keto help with that? Yeah, because um, you're, in, you're improving your circulation. You're improving... Your, um, your antioxidant networks, which is going to help your vascular system greatly. So um, I think if you combine exercise with that, it'll be really, really good. But um, you know, you never hear about your, your, vein, your veins becoming clogged with um, like your arteries do, right? You don't hear that. And a lot of the fat that gets absorbed goes through the venous system. Hmm. So why is that, That's Karen? a very good point. It's, it's, it's going to be That's a video. very good point. So for people who aren't maybe as body savvy, mm -hmm. anatomy savvy, the difference between the veins and the arteries? The arteries uh, are involved with um, all the blood flow that goes to the fingertips and the, that goes out from the heart. Out. The veins, veins pick them up from the capillaries and then bring it back into the heart. So you don't have a clogging of veins. No, but there are things that um, can slow your veins down, and that could usually it's estrogen dominance could do it. Um, age, gravity, <laughs> um, Some don't don't work. You just never work out. You're sitting all day. You're sedentary. You know your venous system can start becoming sluggish because it doesn't have a pump How like come the heart. At me when you say I'm that? looking over there. Sluggish venous system. Just looking over there. Hey, veins happen. Right. I want to tell you. One of the first questions was, I have a gravity problem. This is why you need I have inversion <laughs> tables. Let's go to, um, I guess it's UB. Looks just like you. UB from Maryland. Yes. Oh, hi. How are you? Yes. Good. How are you? Great. Thanks. Uh, let me, um, let me uh, join the chorus of those grateful for your information. I've benefited greatly. I've uh, dropped about 40 pounds. Wow, great. I uh, haven't quite reached my goal, but yeah, but uh, things are going well. However, as I uh, stated earlier, um, lately when I'm consuming beef, I like to leave the fat on because I, I get the grass-fed beef. But I'm noticing now two things. Um, I get my level of satiation has lowered, dropped immensely. I get full very fast. And um, I'm starting to get a little nauseated when I'm eating the fat. Uh, it just kind of makes me feel you know, like kind of kind of feeling. So I'm like, well, what's going on there? I mean, I love, I love beef fat. So what, what's happening, Dr. Bird? Um, here's, here's a couple things, and, and yes, yeah, you can overdo it. If you've been doing keto for a period of time like you are, you've lost some weight, a lot of people, you know, they cut back on the fat a little bit more because they don't need it. They're burning their own fat. Um, and so you might want to cut back, or you can support the stomach with more um, betaine hydrochloride, which will help the gallbladder release more bile. But I think it really boils down to your ability to make bile, and uh, you might need to enhance things with some gallbladder formula, uh, some bile salts, and that should get rid of that symptom. But it, all it means is that you don't have um, the right um, fluids to, to handle the amount of fat that you're going through, and you're experiencing this, this symptom. That's what I would do if I were you. But good question, and thanks for calling. All right, we need to go to um, Tatian. Is that right, from New York? Tatiana. Tatiana. Yes, yes, okay. hi. Hi. <laughs> I did not think I will make it. How are you guys? You Great. made Thank it. 
Um, well, uh, my question is a little bit different. Um, I emailed and was directed to live Q&A, which is so exciting. <laughs> um, so, I, first of all, thank you so much for everything you do. I learned so much from you. I think I deserve a degree <laughs> just based on your YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I guess the my question is, about passion right and your advice um since i'm in my 30s and already have a degree boring one but my interest and passion always has been in holistic nutrition and supplements and i would like to follow um my passion at this point in my life right maybe thanks to you because you kind of <laughs> made it more obvious um right and um so there are so many uh, i mean uh, I would love to at some point and be able to earn income from it um, eventually. But there are so many trainings and courses and requirements for certifications, etc., et uh, to go in this direction. So I would really appreciate your perspective on this um, to go in a conventional way through the nutritional bachelor's degree and then specific specializations would uh. probably take a long time before I get to the fun part. But um, maybe you. Um, have uh, some advice or some recommendations for some trainings and or programs you would recommend for me to start with to go in that here's, direction? here's what I would do. Uh, hopefully, you're coming to the summit for sure because we're gonna we're gonna cut. You're gonna get a lot of education. I have a course that you should do, um, which you'll love. It's a uh, keto coaching training, and it also has a um, we have a health coaching course as well. But the keto coaching one is really awesome. You should take that, and then. Um, I don't know, I think that the best thing to do after that would be to maybe work on a certified nutrition degree. Um, find a good one. Are you gonna learn all the answers in that? Probably not, but you'll have the certification to be, in, to be able to use that as a tool for a lot of different things. And then you could start getting experience and start finding out how to get results when you work with tons of people. So that's what I would do if I were you, but thanks for your call and I, I Wish hope to see you at the summit. Yeah. And you know, there are people who do the health coaching and the keto coaching courses to get the knowledge, and then they start to advise and consult in accordance with their local laws and things like that, and they, they do that for a living. Do you realize that we have probably close to 17,000 coaches already? Wow. That's a lot yeah. of coaches. And they're all coming to the summit, so we're going to have a very <laughs> large event. That would be awesome. So do you have a question? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. So do lipomas shrink with the keto diet? Um, I, I, don't, I have never seen a, a lipoma shrink on the ketogenic diet or any diet. They're, they're kind of like this benign little piece of fat that's underneath your skin that just won't go away. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's, there's things that they do. They, they might inject it with uh, certain um, you know, enzymes and things. And I think for most people, they just go to the doctor and have them removed and um, hopefully they don't come back. But I do know they're connected to the liver, but there's not a lot of data out, out there on it. I've searched everywhere. I, I couldn't find much, so that's my okay. answer. Okay, there you go. Um, now, someone is suggesting you do a video on something. It's, maybe you can read this. Chronic idiopathic urticaria. Urticaria, well, this urticaria. Is, this is a perfect example of, um, there's a lot of specific conditions that people have, um, this would be itching, that I would start with keto and IF first, and then if um, don't try to treat these symptoms right away. Like, get on the basic keto first, and um, handle the basic um, imbalances before you start addressing the million symptoms that people have. Because if you try to fix something like this with gallbladder formula um, without correcting the diet, it may not work as great. What is it? It's a type of itching. It's idiopathic it means unknown cause. Chronic. So chronic, cause. ongoing, unknown cause of your urticaria. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Laura Lynn, you're from Wisconsin. Another Wisconsinite. Are you there? Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Great. Hi. Thank you so much, Dr. Berg and Karen, for taking my call. Uh, I'll try to make this as fast as I can. Um, first of all, starting out, I am on the keto diet. I started March 1st, and um, I my my symptoms that I have with my physical body is um, 
I walk bone on bone on my knees. I have type mm. 2 diabetes. I have a lot of constipation, and I have a lot of coughing phlegm that comes up. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm doing this. I, I'm, on, I'm on the intermittent fasting. I, I eat from 1 to 7. My problem is I don't know when to put in the electrolytes, the greens. Everybody talks about all this, the bulletproof coffee, apple cider vinegar, collagen, you know, and, and, and um, I took a, my, my neighbor has a breast meter. Mm -hmm. I just took that yesterday, and it showed that I'm in full ketosis right now. Okay. Um, my A1C in February, my A1C in February was 9.5, and I'm now down to 7.2. Good. I lost 40 pounds. Wow. Wow. Good. Awesome. And um, so I thank you. And I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm confused. Everybody's telling me different things, and I don't know what direction to go. When do I take all this stuff? I mean, okay. So here's what I do. Um, maybe you can help me out with that. Yeah. And here's the problem <coughs> is going to, there's too many cooks in the uh, kitchen. Mm -hmm. The keto. There's too many cooks in the kitchen. So you need to get this and just walk through it because <coughs> there's really, Everything has, the, has a certain technology to it, and you want to find the correct technology. When you start getting opinions from this person, that person, especially, unfortunately, on the net, you're going to get a lot of different wrong answers. Uh, I did a video on the electrolytes. I did the video on when to take your supplements. I did a video on um, all the different um, fluids that you can eat. Um, I'm not drink, I'm sorry. Um, and when you should take them, like apple cider vinegar. So you should have watched those. Uh, to get more data, but because I cover this, um, you can do the electrolyte powder in the morning when you wake up. Um, but it's really a minor point. As long as you're taking it in your body and you're taking it once a day, you don't really have to worry about it. I don't. I wouldn't recommend taking it before you go to bed because it could cause um, a loss of uh, fluid and you could be up all night urinating. So take it in the morning. That's what I'd recommend. Apple cider vinegar probably take with your meals. That would be fine. Um, it's great that things are coming down. Um, the fact that you did the breath meter and then you showed ke ketones tell, tells me that your body um, is, is in ketosis, but there's going to be a point where that's going to go away because you're going to be using those more efficiently. So when you start doing this to the point where your breath meter says no ketones, that's a good thing. It means that your, your body, you want to check now get a blood meter and check it like a keto mojo. Uh, unit and you're going to find that um, that will show up, but your the urine won't show up anymore, the breath won't show up because you're burning up these very efficiently, and your A1C will probably be down like at five at that point. So those are some things that I would do: get the book, watch my videos, and you know what? You know another thing that you should do. I, don't, I, I think a lot of people don't know I have a um, a little membership site, a keto membership site. It's on my site, and it's pretty much. Um, everything you'd want to know in detail about keto. And the reason why I created that is to give you in order, step by step, what you want to do. And it's not that expensive. You should check that out. It's a membership site and I have like over 200 videos. It covers everything. That way you, you get more training on that. And then come to the summit. Okay? My mom's coming to the summit, by the way. Yes. Your from, mom she's from is, Wisconsin. And I think, uh, except for our middle, our, our youngest son, our whole family will be at the summit. That's right. Everybody. Now, I did want to just say something about that caller. You know, we hear this a lot, and last week someone tagged um, other keto advice as, uh, what, internet keto. Yeah, internet keto. Versus the healthy keto program that comes from here. And, uh, of course, I'm not biased at all. No. But, um, y y you know, you just... You just can't go uh, listening to just everybody's opinion. You have to think for yourself, and you have to make a decision. And, you know, I'll say that there are so many success stories on drberg.com, um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of success stories, tons of feedback and successes. Just the majority of the comments that come through on Facebook and YouTube really are appreciation comments, and I've handled this and that. So. It's like the guy that called earlier today. You know, he doesn't tell his family he's doing something, but other people are are naysaying. I spoke to someone this morning. Chronic history of eating rice every single day. 
constant body problems. She has constant inflammation issues and body problems. She stopped eating rice for three days and was concerned about having an egg for breakfast because of the old, old false data on eggs. Uh, I had an egg for three days and she said, and I didn't eat rice, and my head is so clear, and I feel so good, but then I told my best friend, I'm eating yeah. eggs for breakfast, and the friend is up in arms. You, you have to just be very cautious who you get your advice from. Yeah, you, you have to get your advice from an expert. Thank you, Karen. That's, uh, my, uh, that's my... Two cents? What do you call it when you're your up in... An, my advice. soap box. Thank okay. you. Well, guess what? Terry. I have two more questions get through. Camilla, you're from Missouri. Are you there? Camilla? Hello. Hello. Hi, there how she are is. you? Hello. Hi. Oh, great, thank you. Hi. What's oh. your question? Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Great hearing you. Well, <laughs> um, I'm so excited to speak with you because I really want an opinion from a professional. And so you guys are the ones. A few months ago, I did the keto diet very, very truly. Um, I was following all the nutrition guides uh, that you guys uh, post on the website mm -hmm. and the YouTube videos. And I was feeling great. Energy levels, inflammation, perfect. And the best thing, um, my period um, pains stopped completely, which I had since I was a teenager. Wow. So that was great. That's really good. Um, however, <laughs> a few months after, my period stopped completely. And I <laughs> had no idea why, but I thought, well, maybe some things are, you know, getting organized. Um, I don't know. But time passed, and then I was really concerned. I was eating a lot of cruciferous and balancing my diet. Uh, well, <laughs> everything I thought very well. Uh, but then I, I was tired of just waiting. And uh, one day I decided to, just for a week, uh, go back to eating some sweet potatoes and some, you know, non-processed <laughs> carbs. And my period came back just a short time after. So um, then I was disappointed because I then I knew that something was missing and maybe that was it. I don't know what, what happened, but that's why I'm calling, okay. just I, to hear uh, what you have yeah. to say. I, I think what's happening, there's certain nutrients in sweet potatoes that actually do help your hormones. Uh, it definitely has an uh, estrogenic effect as well. So what I would do if I were you is I would um, reevaluate kind of what type of keto you're on and make sure that you provide all the nutrients because it's really some people that do keto uh, they're missing certain things and they're already deficient which could actually strain the thyroid for example and that can affect the, th um, the whole cycle um, so and the other thing that I would also make sure that you also avoid is dairy if you have any problem cycle at all like either a heavy cycle or no cycle um, that could be an issue um, but I actually created a video on this specific topic that goes into it a lot more. I would search it out and get the complete data because I'm kind of rushing right now. But thanks for your call. And we need to go to Manny from South Texas. Are you there? Uh, yes. Hey. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, good. Uh, um, good to hear you guys. Uh, such a big fan. Uh, you, you guys are doing great work. I just Thanks. got a just got a couple of questions on H pylori. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have done a video uh, now. I've, uh, since 2010, I've I've done about uh, four to five rounds of antibiotics to uh, about the the whole the whole set, not just the antibiotics, but the uh, the the additional medicines that come around with it. Right. Then I developed a fatty liver. Mm. And uh, and so now I'm I'm suffering from uh, inflammation. Wondering what uh, what advice you have uh, along with, uh, of course, keto and uh, and the fasting. Uh, you d you did mention choline for the fatty liver uh, liver. 
mm-hmm. and uh, it's really helped. I know it's uh, it's made a difference, but I'm uh, wondering if I can do any additional things. Do you have any inflammation in your digestive system? Yes. Okay. Um, two things. I want you to email Dr. Berg at drberg.com and just let Maria know that I told her to do that because I, I also would like you to be part of my little experiment. But anyway, on the side note, what you want to do is you want to take oregano oil. I think that could help as a natural antibiotic type thing. Uh, I did a video on H. pylori. You can look that up as well. You definitely need to take a betaine hydrochloride. Unless you have an ulcer, you can't do that. Um, and then probably a good probiotic. But watch my video on H. pylori because I, I cover that in depth and then you can actually get some more information. It really to help you, you want, you want to alter your pH of your stomach. Because once you get into the certain pH range, that thing can go back in remission. But thanks for your call. Wow, we went a little bit over today. We went over and I was scrambling here. I did not bring the summit exhibitor list with me. And that's terrible. But I'm going to shout out uh, some of the exhibitors. We're going to have a ton of exhibitors this year at the summit, which is on the 31st of September, the first, or the 31st of August. Which is coming up in three weeks. The, oh my gosh, it's nerve wracking. The 1st of September. Um, the rooms, the, the room discount will be expiring shortly. The hotel told me to say that out loud. I will say also, there's one seat in the platinum that opened up. If anybody wants that platinum ticket, uh, email drberg at drberg.com and Maria will help secure that ticket. It's not on the website anymore, but one seat opened up. VIP tickets are almost fully sold out, uh, but there's plenty of general tickets. We did say we were going to uh, give a ticket away, but you're going to have to come back next week. We'll give away three. Three general because my social media is now down. So we will give away three tickets, general tickets, next Friday. So do tune in. But for exhibitors, we have Keto Mojo, U.S. Wellness Meats, mm-hmm. we Choco have Perfection. Uh, kibosh. We have Keto Fast Tea. We have Seasoning Company. We have Fats, uh, Good Fats. Braggs. We have, uh, Braggs. Braggs isn't going to be a, a table. You'll get samples in your bag. They are a sponsor. Oh, uh, Braggs. They are a sponsor. Um, and we're missing. We're missing people. I'm going to um, do a big shout out. It's so terrible. I should have brought that with me. So I apologize so in advance. Terrible. If you're wow. watching and you're an exhibitor, it's so bad. But next week, we're going to talk a ton about the summit, and it's going to be giveaway central for general tickets. So tune in next Friday, 11 o'clock. That's right. On that note, have a wonderful weekend, yeah. and we will see you next week. Okay. Okay.